Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Rachel. How are you doing today? I'm good. Hold on. I'm trying to pick up. There we go. I'm good. How are you? I'm dynamite. Thank you. Thanks for asking, and thanks for taking time out of your uh, busy day today. I know you're probably busy getting oh, no, ready I'm to destroy God. My friends, it is the quarantine time for me, so you are making my day having someone to talk to. You talk away. Oh, great. Back at you. Well, I'm going to try to let you do most of the talking. But um, I just found out uh, in my research that you are originally from Toronto. I am, yeah. Right. So is there any food that you miss or really uh, have to get when you first get off the plane that you crave when you go back? Um, Well, you know, it's funny because now we film in Vancouver. So it's technically like it's Canada, um, Mm -hmm. albeit the opposite side of Canada. Uh, however, when I'm out of Canada and I, I come back, yes, there's mm-hmm. one thing here, and there's actually only one store in uh, Vancouver, so it's much more plentiful in Toronto, but it's called Pizza Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like Domino's or something like that, and um, and I love this pizza. I get extra cheese, pineapple, green pepper, and hot pepper, which is sounds mental but it's my favorite pizza (laughs) that sounds weird makes it so good (laughs) yeah that sounds weird uh, but i'll definitely give that a try (laughs) um have you ever heard of a little town called rice lake out there by toronto no oh okay uh i used to uh it's a little northeast about a half hour away i used to vacation there with my family as a child but uh oh it's like northern ontario lakes are just yeah, beautiful. Uh, you've been in uh, the business for over two decades. I'm wondering if there was an uh, if there was an actor who made an impression on you that made you decide to become an actor yourself. Yeah, I, you know, I don't think I consciously thought about it at the time because, honestly, even though I was in the business since I was 12, I don't think I made the decision that I actually wanted to be an actor until I was about 22. Mm-hmm. Um, but growing up, and I think I can actually credit a lot of Alice to this actress. Uh, I used to be obsessed with watching I Love Lucy, and I love <laughs> Lucille Ball. Um, and, you know, at the time, I just loved her because she was so animated and her face was so expressive and she was funny. But now I I deeply admire, um, you know, the boundaries that she broke down for women on television uh, you know, before her, they never really dealt with women being pregnant on television and um, how she had creative control of that show and her character, uh, I think is really quite miraculous. But um, yeah, I just, yeah, I really appreciated and, and still do the way in which she approached the physicality of acting and specifically for her of comedy. And I, and I really try in all of my characters specifically with Alice to develop the physicality of that character because so much of our communication as humans is is nonverbal and so I think sometimes actors forget um, that your physicality is as important as the words coming out of your mouth Mm -hmm. yeah it's uh it's every much as important I would say Mm -hmm. yeah um you play well I want to mention that I have seen I've already watched the premiere and it's fabulous. Uh, this this piece is scheduled to come out after the premiere, so if we lean into spoilery stuff, uh, we'll be okay, or I can leave it out if you want. Uh, okay. But um, so you play Elizabeth Marie Beth, aka Alice, on the Batwoman. What's it like to put your stamp on a DC character such as Alice and bring yourself into the world of comic comic book fans and conventions and stuff like things of that nature? Yeah. So I I had played. Um, Dinah Lance back when I was 16 and I think at that point in my career you know I was a huge fan of Batman when I was a little girl and, and it was really cool for me to be in that universe but I didn't really understand the, the weight of it the way that I do now as an adult mm-hmm. um, and I think when I initially was trying to develop what my take on Alice was going to be I, I was acutely aware of the responsibility 
to all of the comic book fans who had, you know, perhaps grown up with this character as part of you know, the mythology that they read and and uh, felt like they knew her. And so I always understand when people are critical of, of actors' takes on characters because it's, that character is their friend, you know? Um, so I was actually really nervous to, to take on Alice. Um, and I wasn't sure how the reception would be to her also because she is the villain. Um, but I was, I was just really pleasantly surprised by how people embraced Alice and, and really loved her. And I got to get into that whole Comic-Con world uh, with another project that I did, Lost Girl, and um, it's been so fun for me seeing, you know, little kids, adults alike, dress up as Alice, um, and, you know, post it on social media, and I, I love to see that. I just get the biggest kick out of it, so uh, it's been wonderful. Who uh, Do you prefer playing the good girl? Uh, you are on um, uh, Birds of Prey, right? Diana Lance? Yes. Right. So do you prefer playing the superhero or the villain? Oh, definitely the villain. Mm -hmm. I I always feel like the superhero, at the end of the day, has to be likable um, and has to be good. And while that's wonderful and we need to see that, um, you always get the great, you know, the great one-liners and um, it's so much more kind of delicious to be bad. I, I think I much prefer playing more to the side of the bad, however, with the possibility of redemption for the good. My mom actually told me a couple of years ago that I, I play the redeemable bitch really well. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my sweet spot. <laughs> um, how much of this, of season two, did you guys shoot before lockdown, or have you been working on this since lockdown? Um, Has- yeah, so we actually didn't shoot any of season two. We, we didn't even finish season one. Um, we had just com- we were one or two, sorry, three days shy of completing uh, episode twenty in season one when we were told that we were going to go into lockdown. So we finished mm-hmm. the third last day, and then they managed to put the episode together without those final two days of shooting. Um, and then we came back to work on season two at the end of the summer, um, and. Yeah, and so far are working on episode nine. Mm-hmm. I would like to mention again, like I, uh, this is going to come out after the premiere, so if it's okay, we might talk about a few spoilers. I'd yeah. like, I'd like to know your reaction when you read the script and realized that you would be responsible for creating another Batwoman. Yeah, I, I, I we and we actually deal with that. Um, it's something that's actually told to Alice and I think in a way she's proud of that Mm -hmm. um, because she's probably a bit of a narcissist, but I think in another way um, it it really sheds light onto the fact that there would even need to be uh, a a hero like that um, to counter the negative that Alice is putting out. And I, I think that kind of the weight of that kind of hits Alice. Um, I was happy that they gave the, you know, the responsibility of kind of creating a new Batwoman. However, I think that Ryan had all the qualities and, and was Batwoman, you know, in many ways before she even put on the suit. Um, but I was happy they gave that to Alice because in – the first season, I really loved the connection that Alice had with that woman, that they were twins, they were sisters. And it was one of the things that I I mourned with the loss of that. And, and so having Alice be tied to Ryan's character, um, I, was, I was very happy for that connection. And, and I'll, I have been very happy to sort of see it unfold throughout the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, indelibly connected to both uh, iterations of Batwoman. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can you? Would you like to say, or can you tease? Do you have anything to do with the disappearance of your sister Kate? I have nothing to do with the disappearance of my sister Kate, and I'm actually super pissed off about that <laughs> <laughs> because 
I spent an entire season trying to kill her. Um, and Alice is very angry that it was, in fact, not her who uh, killed Kate Kane. Um, but I actually think that it's, you know, it's just a cover for this tremendous sense of grief that she has for losing her sister because um, I, I don't think that, you know, even though she believed she wanted to kill Kate, um, I, I don't actually think she would have ever gone through with it. Yeah, um, as much as she wanted to, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we all want to kill our sister sometimes. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm told that episode two is a really big episode for your character, Alice. Uh, can you tease a little bit of that for us? Yes. Episode, oh, my gosh. Now I'm, I'm going back in my memory of what we did in episode two. Um, I'm pretty sure that that is when um, Coriana comes into the picture. So last season, we teased it a little bit, um, the, this character, Sophia, and Alice was always very afraid when the name Sophia was mentioned and we knew that she had some connection to Coriana um, and it was actually always the, the creator's intention to fill in the blanks of what happened to Alice after she left Cartwright's house to present day Alice and how she became the leader of the Wonderland gang, how she learned how to fight, all of those things. And so we are going to delve um actually quite deeply into that storyline, which I'm, I'm really happy about because it, you know, not only presents all these new characters for Alice to interact with, but also Sophia in and of herself is, is such an epic character in the comic book. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really happy that they brought her in. Uh, yeah. Well, you mentioned Sophia, big name, and also Black Mask, another big name was going to be joining yeah, this team this season. So um, are you, will Alice, Slash Beth be taking a back seat, or will you still be the main antagonist for Batwoman, or will you be teaming up with Sophia Black Mask? You know, it's funny because I, it, I know that I'm the villain of the show, but in many ways that's not how I see Alice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so this idea that you know people keep saying kind of like the big bad of the season, and I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I'm also a big bad of of the show, um, but. I love that they're that they bring in other sort of um, malevolent. Um, oh my goodness, why can't I say that word? Uh, malevolent. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Characters. Um, mean. It, yeah. And it's sort of other forces for evil because it allows Alice to not have to carry the responsibility of always being like only the bad guy on the show. You know, you can sort of see all these different layers of her. So. I I think in some ways she'll take a, a backseat to being bad, but of course everybody loves to see bad Alice. So right, that right. Will never really go away. <laughs> is is there uh, anybody else that we can expect to see? Any other um, deep bench villains? Um, or heroes? I don't know if I can say any of them to be honest. Okay, but, that's fair. Um, but we are. Uh, yeah, we are bringing in a lot of um, existing DC characters, similar to how we did last season, um, specifically more the evil uh, of the evil kind, um, which is, is really cool. DC kind of, you know, I think as I understand it, they'll sort of say, okay, these are the people that you're allowed to use, and then Caroline chooses which characters she'd like to incorporate into the show. So um, mm -hmm. we've actually already had a couple of them. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell me about, are there, or do you want to talk about the, are there any challenges or uh, responsibility for being part of a show that spotlights a gay superhero and arguably a lesbian icon? I mean, I don't think the responsibility falls on me any more than it should fall on anyone in the entertainment business. It's really important to have those characters and not have them just be token characters, you know, to tell their stories. Um, that's been something I've actually really believed in throughout my career. Um, in fact, on Birds of Prey, had it not been canceled, there was talks of making uh, Dinah a queer character. Oh. I played a queer character, Tamsin, on Lost Girl. Um, I, you know, I was so, so happy to be a part of this show 
um, having a queer main character superhero, uh, and now of course it being a woman of color, I yeah I just think I think those stories need to they need to be told and they need to be uplifted because television should all art should always be a reflection of the world um and i think up until very recently it wasn't doing a very good job of that so um yeah i I think it's really cool to be a part of this project so i I think um hopefully some of my responsibility is already done just being on the show and showing that that's what i want to be a part of but yes of course um i think to continue to talk about it um you know, uplift it, that is, of course, my continued uh, responsibility. I, yeah, very well. Thank you. Well well put. Um, do you think we'll ever see the real cousin, your real cousin Bruce on the show? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I remember when um, Caroline said that they were going to have Batman come in, but it was that, you know, Alice is making a face for Hush or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um and I thought, oh, my goodness, where are they going to cast? Because, you know, there's sort of the iconic look of, of Batman right. uh, as it's been told in the comics. And um, and I thought Warren was perfect. I, I love – and he's also just such a nice guy, so it was really lovely to work with him. But um, I suppose it would have to be Warren once again <laughs> if the real Batman came back because I do faces pretty accurately on the show. So, um but yeah, we'll we'll see. You know, hopefully we get many more seasons, and there'll be lots of episodes to tell all sorts of different stories. Um, is there anything that um, I'm missing? Is there? Is, do you want to talk? Is there anything that the future holds in 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 store for season? I'm sorry. What does the future, at least for season two, hold in store for Alice slash Beth? Um, I think one thing that will surprise the fans is that there's love in store for Alice, um, which is really interesting to me because it's something that we have not seen. uh, It's a situation really that we have not seen Alice in or Beth for that matter. And um, I guess we teased it a little bit with Beth and and Luke Fox and them maybe having a crush on each other, uh, which Cam and I loved. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's going to be a very interesting uh, situation that will unfold for Alice this season. Well, I mean, um, you're kind of due, right? That's that's the staple of the CW shows is the re- the, the relationships behind the superheroes and the powers. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I want to thank you for your time. That's just about all I got. Do you? Uh, I do have one more question. When I was a uh, a young man, I used to have to get up early and uh, fight my brother for the couch to get a good spot to watch my favorite Saturday morning cartoon. And eat my yeah. favorite Saturday morning cereal. So I'm wondering, um, Rachel, what is your favorite Saturday morning cartoon and your favorite Saturday morning cereal? Oh, that's easy. So my favorite Saturday morning show were reruns of um, the old Adam West Batman. Oh. I loved that, that show. And I used to wake up before anyone in my family, I think like 6 a.m., and <laughs> watch the reruns of it. Um and I, my favorite cereal, still to this day, is Lucky Charms. Love Lucky mm, Charms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. Uh, well, you just bought yourself a forever fan because uh, the Adam West to Batman is my favorite show in the world. Oh, I even have my really? own podcast, and yeah, I could. T- who? Let me ask. So this is kind of another backup question. Now that I know you're aware and familiar with the show, aside, I like to take the big four off of the table and ask what villain would you like to play on the 66 show? I feel, you know, the big four are a little too easy. And since you have a little knowledge. Okay, so when you say the big four. Joker, Catwoman, Penguin, Riddler. Yeah, I love Unless you, and you've always, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, that's also because I'm a, I'm a girl. Um, (laughs) Okay. Trying to think. Uh, maybe. There, I mean, other 
girls on it. There was Minerva. Um, well, yeah, there was Minerva. There was the, the Siren. Um, Calamity Jane. Calamity Jane. Um, the lady that... For some reason, all I could think of Dr. Right Cassandra. Now is that when um, he went, remember, it was like King Tut, that like crazy dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dance. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, I can't stop thinking. I mean, now that's so culturally inappropriate, but uh, for some reason, I kept stop thinking of that guy because I remember when I was about like, yeah. Um, <laughs> so maybe him, but I don't know if I, don't know if I could say that. Um, but it's, it's funny because also, now that I think about it, we're, isn't there a false safe in in that show as well? Uh, a, a false safe? A couple of times. No, false safe. False, his name, false face, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're kind of delving into the false face society on our show now. Right, right. Um, as well. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'd have to say Mad Hatter. Oh, uh, yeah. Like the Hatter guy. It's, yeah. It just as known to Alice. Yeah. Very good. How about you? What's your favorite? Uh, my favorite might be False Face. I think he's pretty good, and uh, I really do like King Tut. He's one of my favorite um, all-time characters. Yeah. But oh, Egghead. Egg- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, because everybody puts so much into those, you know, they're one-off characters for the most part, one-off yeah. characters, and all those famous actors put so much, you know, over the top a lot of times. Well, I know, and some of them change, like Catwoman. Yeah. Had so many iterations. Had three like, different cat women, yeah. Yeah, so then they became, I don't know, they were sort of different characters. Anyway. Oh, that's so funny. I love that you love that. Everyone's always like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, uh, maybe I'll try to schedule a little more time and we could talk a little more in depth on that. Um, I know oh that you're God, busy. I would love that. Okay, I will, well, I'm I'm going to take you up on that. I'll definitely be back in touch with that. Uh, for my, okay, I have a, I have a little podcast of my own that we talk about the, that show a lot. So maybe we can get you for that. Love that. But yeah, uh, is is yeah okay? That's a date. Uh, is there anything else I need to know about Batwoman season two before I let you go? Uh, yeah, I know. I'm just talking about another show. <laughs> I'm publicizing my own. Um, but no, I I just encourage everybody to tune in and like, um, and honestly su- support the show because. It's it's so much bigger than like just the comic now, and I'm I'm really proud of it, and mm-hmm. I just want everyone to see it. You got it. We'll see what we can do about that. Um, right, do me a favor, Rachel. Have a great uh, rest of your day, and I will definitely be back in touch about that uh, Batman sixty six conversation. I look forward to it. Okay. To it. Thanks again. Thank so much. Bye bye. Thank, thank you, Jimmy. Bye. bye.